Behold the lowly chameleon, a master of disguise, able to blend seamlessly into any background. A good tactic for avoiding predators, but it's not meant for other chameleons. But when it comes to humans, they do use this tactic on others. Sometimes I wonder to what extent this is true for the average person. Given a different group of friends, would their taste in music be different? Their political affiliations? How they spend their time? Even what they say about God? How many people actually have a genuine opinion that they wouldn't change regardless of who they were with? Tell me an opinion that you have about something. Just one opinion that you have about anything at all. Have you ever witnessed people changing their entire voice and manner of speaking depending on who they're talking to? Now, I'm not saying this without sympathy, because let's face it, everyone wants to be loved. But at the end of the day, you can't just create an identity for yourself that fits the mold of society. I think what it comes down to is if you're willing to give up one of your greatest possessions, your individuality, your unique identity as a person, what makes you you. I'm not making really a judgment call on inconsequential things. Like if you want to buy a jacket or something because it's the latest style, more power to you. I'm saying that every person should have some principles that they don't compromise on. Like, I know for instance I mentioned music before, but to me it's something I feel like I have good taste in and that other people should appreciate. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't really matter to you what music it is as long as it's popular, it's like, well, I think you're missing out, but I won't make a judgment call on it. It's honestly really maybe not a big part of your identity. But if you do believe something to be true, you should stand by it. It's what you believe that defines you more than anything else. And you should do your best to discern what is true from what's a lie. One verse that always really meant a lot to me is Proverbs 25, 26, that says, A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. When you do the will of a wicked person or a wicked society because you falsely perceive them to be stronger than you, you turn the good that God designed you for that would help people into harm because you're just strengthening that culture. Proverbs 29.25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever fears the Lord will be safe. This was a big thing in Jesus' day, especially among the upper class. The Bible says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And from what I understand about Jewish culture, you do not want to be kicked out of the synagogue. But even if it means the death of the body, whoever fears the Lord more than man will in fact be safe. This life is temporary, and Jesus said, If you confess me before men, then I will confess you before the Father. But if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before the Father. I think this most applies in modern-day America to peer pressure. If your friends are doing something you don't agree with, you can have the confidence to leave, and if they're really your friends, you'll see them again. It's hard to have this confidence more when you're younger, and when you're older, it gets a little easier, but it's still there. Like, for instance, can a teenager who grows up in church have a real belief in Jesus, or will they lose faith as soon as their militant atheist college professor quotes his favorite party lines? My point is to have the conviction to not care what the world thinks. Be yourself and don't shy away from your beliefs. Thanks.